all recited just to be performed and watched. <clears throat> so um, the first poem I'm going to perform is called Audiobook. <clears throat> Hi, and thank you for purchasing the audiobook of How to Ruin Your Life for Fun and Profit as written by Neil Hilborn and read by me. So, you want to be unhappy. You probably think you need to be in pain to be an interesting person. And you're right. The people who care about you will tell you that you don't need to be in pain to be an interesting person. But just remember, musicians are always the most popular the day after they die. So, are you ready to marry to someone? Step one. <clears throat> Hate yourself. You are presumably a human being between the ages of alive and dead, so chances are you're already there. Congratulations! Step two. Fall in love. Now people will tell you that this takes years, but we have a secret method that will allow you to fall in love with anyone under a week. The trick is you have to be completely unable to tell the difference between love and dependence. Step three. Fall in love with someone else at the same time. People will tell you this is impossible given the love already inside you, but they don't know you. Your love is limitless. Your heart is a well that goes all the way down. It can fit anyone in there, but remember to lie about it. Love cannot exist with the knowledge of other love, you see. Step five. Step four, sorry. At this point, you may be doubting your decision to completely mess up your life. So ask yourself, would you rather be happy or interesting? Would you rather be on the news or just watching it? Happy people don't make history. Happy people make children and then die. <laughs> Step five. Self-diagnose a mental disorder, disorder that makes you aloof and impossible to contact. If someone accuses you of being a bad friend, lover, or child, accuse them of being insensitive. Step six. <clears throat> At this point, all the elements are in right place. Now start sabotaging your own life. Remember, this is research. This isn't crazy. This is material. This is necessary for your personal growth. Step seven. <clears throat> Sorry, I need to catch it. Step seven is, you've been in love with two people for a while now. Tell them about each other. Whichever one stays is the winner. Step eight. <laughs> Call your boss a fascist chipmunk lover. Tell your friends fun lies about your other friends. Tell your mother she was the reason you tried to kill yourself. It just isn't depression until total isolation. <coughs> Step nine, hurt yourself. It may be credit card debt. It may be gonorrhea. It may be a razor, literal or not, make yourself bleed. <laughs> Step 10, create something. Paint your scars on the side of a building. Write a poem and shout it out to strangers. The misery circus is parading into town and you are holding the banner. Miles of people are following you. They're all wearing grey, a rainbow of grey. They're all watching as they kick themselves bloody on their own feet. You have scars and everyone wants to kiss them. This is stigmata pornography. This is inspiration. You are the reason they're still alive. You are mourning in a world of midnights. You are so brave. And they want to be brave just like you. Look at what you've built. Everything you loved is gone. Tell yourself it was worth it. Wow. <laughs> okay, uh, so the second poem, it's called Another Rape Poem, and uh, it's been written by Brenna Tavoy. <clears throat> to the guy in the back of the room, complaining about listening to another rape poem, when they asked me why it took years of writing poems to write this poem, to write the rape poem, I will tell them all about you how you watch this stage the same way you watch CSI. You already know what is coming. This is just another mangled body. I am just another hit and run. So you take this time to get another drink, I'll tell them how every story sounds the same once you stop listening. Like this, this is just another rape poem, another little girl lost poem, another do not touch me until I ask you to touch me poem, another seven year old sleeping with a Tinkerbell wand on my nightstand and a kitchen knife under my pillow because I swore the next time he came into my bedroom uninvited I would come out bleeding. Poem. And I get it. I get that you're tired of hearing rape poems. I am tired of hearing rape poems. The same way soldiers are tired of hearing their own guns go off. Believe me, we all wish the war was over. But friend, you are staring out at a world on fire, complaining about how ugly you think the ashes are. The poems are not the problem. We have built cathedrals out of spite and splintered bone. Of course they aren't pretty. Nothing holy ever is. Think of Gandhi's blistered feet. Think of that crown made of thorns. Think of the sweat on your mother's sacred chest as she pushed to get you here. The work is never pretty, but nothing holy ever is. The work is never pretty, but that's the only way the house gets built. So I'm sorry that you don't want to look at my wreckage. But I have carpentry in my mouth and I have a hammer in my hands. You, know, you cannot stop me from building. And as long as you're there, 
in the back of the room. I will be here, voice made from smolder, because this is my story and you cannot take this from me. So I'm going to end it on a light poem. It's a love poem and um, I've written it myself and it's called My First Kiss. Lover, I want to tell you about my first kiss. My first kiss with you. It happened two weeks into that firework-like burst of my heart into a million sparkles of a day when I met you. Two weeks since we'd been dating and I was standing and you were standing across the room from me and I was talking to my friends when I happened to look up at you and you were staring at me like I was a sculpture by the favorite sculptor of yours whose name I always forget and you looked at me and then you looked at your phone I asked you what you looked at your phone and so a second later my phone buzzed I took it out it was a text from you it said I like you so much and then I looked up and you had that warm caramel of a smile on your face and that that lover was our first kiss and I still have its taste in my mouth Yeah. Okay, so I have another poem that I didn't prepare for and um, it's called Second Chances. <clears throat> People think that life starts in spring. They're wrong. Life starts whenever the hell it wants to. In the eighth month of pregnancy or the tenth. In dead cold of winter or in days inundated with monsoon. Spring is never the beginning or even the middle. It's a quarter in the penny that is the year. Second chances start in coldest days with resolutions and promises and tears and joy. Spring is the death of winter and death of second chances. But fear not, there will be third. Because if spring comes, there is no denying that winter is far behind, that the second chance you're reaching for is miles away. But remember, it is on its way.